Hello and welcome back to Mischief Gaming's games from the Digital Bargain Bin. Now I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to drive a limo? Well how about a limo that's always rotating? Or maybe a limo that not only rotates, but drives in water and jumps in the air all at once? Well have I got a game for you. Roundabout for the PlayStation 4. Regularly $14.99, I picked this game up for I think about $5 on the PlayStation Holiday Sale. Now just to let you know this game is available on other platforms including PC and the Xbox One. And when you buy the PlayStation 4 version you're gonna get the PS Vita version for free. Now let me start off this review by saying this game is fucking crazy. And it's perfect for any of you guys that like to live stream and show off like funny crazy games to your friends. So, man, does this game really take me back to my childhood? You see, when most people were playing, like, Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64, I was playing a Sega CD. And you know what came along with Sega CD? Shitty, full-motion video video games. Games like Corpse Killer, Sewer Shark, Dragon Slayer, uh... Now, don't get me wrong, the whole game isn't just one long full motion video bullshit. It's actually a fucking game. But all the cutscenes are full motion video with a 1970s B-movie vibe to it and a kind of trippy thing going on. Yeah. You play a character named Giorgio Manos, who is played by a girl but might be a guy in the game, I don't know. He slash she has a girlfriend, and the name is just throwing me off a bit. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with same-sex relationships in a video game, it's just a confusing situation, but I digress. Giorgio is a silent protagonist and the world's first rotating limousine driver. What the fuck does that mean, you ask? Well, the limo you have to drive around is always spinning, which actually makes for some pretty challenging gameplay. Driving the limo at first is pretty difficult, but it gets easier as you go through the game. The world is full of obstacles to overcome as you drive strange characters around to their desired destinations. You'll come across the weirdest of weirdos, from little kids to tripped out skeletons, all of them with laughably bad acting. You might even come across like the same actor portraying like a different character a few times in this game. Some of these seemingly nice people will straight out ask you to murder groups of people in order to complete their objectives. It's pretty surreal to see how much violence is in this game, especially because the world is all bright and colorful and happy. And then you just see people fucking exploding everywhere as you drive over them with your fucking spinning limousine. You can kill as many people as you want, but if you destroy a man's car, it's like a felony or something. Like, you'll, you'll get prosecuted and they want to arrest your ass and shit, but kill some people, that's alright. It's okay. Cool with that, baby. You know what's a really good idea? How about we drive around high in the spinning limousine? Yeah. What could possibly go wrong from that? So yeah, there is some drug use in this game, uh, which is kind of funny because the actress is just eating candy buttons, so... I want to watch those kids and them candy fucking buttons. The story is relatively short and you can finish it in one entire sitting, however, there's plenty of reason to retry missions and extra challenges all of which are posted on online leaderboards. There's also a bunch of stuff to collect, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Let's focus on the story right now. The story is pretty much a B-movie pile of shit, but the presentation is very cool and very different for a video game. You pretty much need to defeat your rival who stole your business idea and get the girl with a bunch of random shit happening all over the place. There are two ways to get upgrades. One, progressing through the story. Two, completing a certain challenges or requirements that the game asks you to do, which aren't necessary to get through the game. One of the most important and useful abilities is the ability to jump, and it's the only ability that's able to stay with your car throughout the whole game. You see, you start off the game with one ability, the slowdown feature, which allows you to understand how to get through trickier spots by slowing down time, of course. Then you hit a certain part of the game which unlocks the jump functionality, so you can slow down and jump. Any upgrade you get on after that would replace the slowdown functionality, so you'll always have an ability and the jump functionality. Other abilities include the ability to uh, drive in water and the ability to uh, make your car smaller for a certain amount of time. There's also a bunch of other ones but I'll let you find that out on your own. Now you might be saying, so what, my, my car can jump, what the, what the hell does that do? You know, what, what does that do for me? You know? Well, I'll tell you what it does for you. You can jump on buildings like a motherfucking ball. No, I'm not kidding, you can jump on buildings and shit, it's crazy. 
This makes getting around the world way easier. It also opens new pathways for exploration. Don't worry, it's still a very challenging game with the jump functionality. The game designers are dicks and will just drop cars on you all random and shit. Yeah. It's real fucking fair, you bunch of fucking assholes. Now your car can and will blow up if you hit too much shit. It doesn't restart the game or level or anything, it kinda just brings you back a little bit uh, to the checkpoint or the garage where you're just at. Which sounds fine, but there are parts where you will just crash over and over and it'll piss you off when you're just inches away from the checkpoint only to be pulled back 10 feet and having to do the difficult roundabout with some asshole in the middle just driving back and forth. Talk about fucking road rage! Fucking assholes. There are a bunch of hidden goodies to collect in this game. From stashes of cash you can use to buy other places that make you more cash, and the cash you can use for cosmetic things like turning your limo purple and putting a big sign on it or a teddy bear or whatever the fuck the game gives you. You can also collect funny horns for your car that have fart noises and whatnot. There are a few things in this game I didn't care for, like how you have to go to a garage in order to swap out your upgrades instead of just going to a menu and switching them out in the pause screen or something more simple like that. Then there are graphical things like rock formations, which don't look like they're in your way but are actually are, and you'll actually explode because you'll be hitting the shit out of them and you're like, why the fuck am I hitting this? It's not in my way. But it is. It is. It's in your way. But that's all really nitpicky shit. The game's controls are fine. And the game looks decent enough for what it is. I wouldn't recommend this game at full asking price, but if you can get it for sale like I did, it's well worth it. I wouldn't pay over $10 for it, it needs a little bit more meat for that, but all in all it's a solid little downloadable game and well worth your time. Hey guys, I'm Bob Zombie. Thank you for watching this episode of Mischief Gaming. If you like it, please be sure to subscribe. I'm going to link uh, my other videos here if you're interested. Uh, I have my recent review of Bread Pub Brawlers. What a piece of shit. And I'm probably going to link uh, maybe a Resident Evil, you know, something over there. Uh, either a review or a top 10. Um, but yeah, so uh, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time on uh, Mischief Gaming.